Welcome back to Primetime Lawmakers. Tax overhaul has dominated many discussions around the Capitol for the last several weeks. Intense negotiations between House and Senate leaders have been ongoing to draft a bill based on the recommendations of the Tax Reform Council. Last Friday, a compromise was announced and a House vote was expected yesterday. However, House Speaker David Ralston said late yesterday afternoon that the bill was dead for the session. That's not the end of the road, though. The Speaker also said work with the Senate would continue and raise the possibility of adding tax reform to this summer's special redistricting session. For our in-depth panel tonight, I'm joined here in the studio by Sarah Beth Gale, Deputy Director of the Georgia Budget and Policy Institute, a nonpartisan organization that studies budget and tax issues. And by Kelly McCutcheon, President of the Georgia Public Policy Foundation, an independent think tank. It's great to have you both with us this evening. Thanks for having us. This is certainly a message for our time and an issue for our time. Let's deal first with uh, what the speaker said. He said he wasn't comfortable with the quality of the numbers coming from the economists charged with predicting how tax reform would work. The economist at Georgia State, I guess, who were scoring this. Sarah Beth, let's start with you. Are you comfortable with the numbers coming out of Georgia State, or was it was this some bad stuff going in here? Well, I think Georgia State University does a great job. I mean, one of the challenges right now is there are a lot of different iterations of the bill in a very quick timeline. Um, so, you know, that brings some uncertainty into the revenue estimates of if we had a little bit more time, could we be more precise? I think that we probably could be, which is one of the criticisms of moving this quickly towards the end of session. But overall, you know, I think that the Fiscal Research Center at the Georgia State University does a great job. They always do the fiscal notes, and I trust that they're doing that same job right they, now. They kept getting some output that said, okay, now this particular uh, section of the uh, populace, Kelly, is going to be hurt with the tax increase. This will become unfair. Is it kind of like sawing legs off a stool here, figuring out how this is all going to work out? Well, it is, or pushing on a balloon. You, you, you see it was a tax increase at one point, and then you try to fix that, and all of a sudden maybe some middle-income families are being hurt. You try to fix that, and all of a sudden it's too much of a tax reduction. And they were going back and forth and back and forth. Things were changing. The numbers kept changing. Sometimes they couldn't figure out why the numbers were changing. Uh, you know, it's, re it's really a combination of many things. It's a pressure cook situation. And also, you know, I think it would be a good idea, why do we have one organization. If I'm doing it, I would like to have other people looking over my shoulder, making sure, because people make human errors. It's not their fault. So it'd be nice if we had two or three different sources to make sure that uh, we we're being as accurate as possible. Also run different models to see how it would come out. Yeah. That's right, and different people, because, you know, this is the this future of the state of Georgia, and it's I think it's unfair to rely on any one person or any one entity with that important of a task. Uh, Sarah Beth, does your group agree with the goal here, a fairer, flatter tax system, more stable revenue? Well, we definitely agree with tax reform. I mean, we have a tax system from the 1950s that just doesn't track our economy anymore. So the concept is, let's broaden bases, lower rates, that's kind of the tenets of good tax policy policy and hopefully that'll make the tax system more adequate so that we can meet the needs of Georgians. Is, is the problem this crazy quilt of exemptions and exceptions that you have to give and take and the political pressure that's on there? I mean, well, we leave half the money on the table, right, that we could collect taxes on. Is that a fair figure, Kelly? Uh, very fair. Both the sales tax and the income tax. Uh, absolutely, we need to transition a broad base and lower rates. I, I think all economists agree it is the best way to go. Shifting from away from an income tax and toward consumption taxes is good policy. But getting there runs into politics, mm -hmm. and it's quite difficult. Well, mm -hmm. that's kind of where I think we probably diverge a little bit okay, is, talk about is that. the income tax um, is the one opportunity to put that equity in there, make sure that low-income households are not burdened. So that's where we need to be very cautious with tax reform. So if we are going to move from an income tax to a consumption tax, we need to make sure that we really are capturing those low-income um, households with credits or something in the income tax to make sure that that extra sales tax isn't overly burdening them. Is one of the big problems the fact the standard deduction is practically an antique? That is definitely a, for Georgians. Yeah, I mean it's it's from the 19, early 1980s, so that that's a factor as well. So a lot of those families who are taking the standard deduction haven't gotten a change since the 1980s. Did this uh, new policy address this at all? This new uh, well, reform package? We absolutely agree that you've got to take care of low income. Georgians. So mm -hmm. when you're changing the income tax, they are going to bear the burden unless you put in an earned income tax credit or tax credits like we're in this bill. We had an unprecedented hundreds of million dollars of tax credits 
in this bill to protect low-income individuals. Some argue that it was enough, some argue that it might not be enough, but you can take care of that. We do need to address the income tax. It's a tax on work and investment and savings for entrepreneurs, for small businesses, to attract and keep those innovative companies that we're putting out of our research universities. We're losing 75% of those over the last decade. Our income tax has got to be more competitive. We've got neighbors to the north and south that have 0% income tax, and of course, Texas, not too far mm -hmm. away, that's creating many, many jobs with zero income tax. Now, the Speaker Ralston, is said, he's not taking the saddle off the horse yet, but he's pulled back on the reins. He said, it's not dead, it's been delayed. <laughs> uh, what, what are the prospects of do, dealing with this next? A special session? Should we wait till next year? I've heard some arguments to say, hey, let's take our time, deal with it in January. What do you think? Well, you know, tax reform is, is still to us a very important issue. I mean, we have structural problems in our tax system that aren't just, they aren't going to go away. So we need to fix this um, as soon as possible because if we don't, we're going to continue to have more of the same, more cuts to our school systems, more cuts to universities. Um, deferred maintenance on our transportation system. Um, so this is an issue that's not going to go away. And, and Kelly, last word to, from you on this, uh, as far as political me momentum is concerned, the longer we wait, the more likely it is to die? Well, absolutely. A lot of people have gone to a lot of hard work with the tax council to do this work. If you don't think tax reform is important, you look at the CEO of Caterpillar who said that he's thinking about moving operations out of Illinois because of the tax code. We need to do something now to get our economy going. We can't wait until next year. Well, what about the what about the danger of mixing a highly political process like the redistricting this summer uh, with, uh, with with tax reform? Is, is that dangerous? Well, I, I don't think you can take politics out of tax policy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think any time you're going to do tax reform, it's going to be a hard vote. I mean, it's going to be one of those leadership um, issues that's going to be difficult at any time. And what about the dangers of waiting until an election year to do this? Well, you're always going to have winners and losers, particularly when it's going to be close to revenue neutral. We don't have a billion dollars to throw at everyone to make them happy. So uh, an election year is very, very difficult. It's hard enough during an off election year. Waiting until next year is going to be very difficult. Thanks for your input and expertise on this. It's great seeing you. Thanks for having Thank us. You.